So the Dynamic Keystock is a very powerful tool that allows you to have functionality similar to macros, but without all the automation. If you want, you can make DKS behave a lot like macros itself, but you can also do things with DKS that simply macros just cannot replicate. But of course, what the heck is DKS? Well, DKS is a tool that allows you to have four different actions on one single key. And you can set wherever those actions will be performed on the downstroke and upstroke. You can change the millimeters of it, and that's very nice, of course. First, it's also important to note that not all games allow the use of DKS, especially in competitive or ranked settings. For example, OSU does not permit it. So before setting up any custom bindings, it's a good idea to check whether DKS is allowed in the game or not. But one quick example I can give to you is, let's say you are playing a game you want to slow walk when you slowly press in the w key and you basically want to sprint once you bottom down the switch you can do this with basically dks and now i will show you exactly how you can actually set this all up but before i do that i will give you a short explanation on how exactly the dks menu actually works so in Wotilti, navigate to the advanced keys tab on the left. Click on the dynamic keystroke button and select the key where you would like to have DKS set up. In our case, it will be the W key. On the left, you'll find the key bindings, which are the actions assignable to each key. These allow for up to four different actions per key. To assign bindings, simply click on the square and press a key on your keyboard or drag it from the bindings menu. Right clicking on it will remove the binding again. Shifting to the right, you will see two sections. The key press section for when the key is pressed down and the key release section for when the key is released back up. At the top, you will simply see the activation distance for the bindings. This value can actually be adjusted by simply clicking on it. On the key press and release tabs, you'll notice the trigger circles. If you assign the binding, these circles allow you to determine where the action triggers within the key's range. A single circle means that the action is activated only once. In this case, it will just activate once the 0.3 millimeters is passed on the downstroke. But on the upstroke, nothing is assigned, so nothing really happens. If the circle is dragged out, it will mean the action will be activated throughout the entire key range. In this case, 3.6 millimeters till 3.0 millimeters on the upstroke, the W key will be activated. So let's go to the tester tab and test this all out. As you can see, I press down on the switch on the W key and it only activates once on the 0.3 millimeter. And actually when I slowly release it again, you will see the W key will stay active on the upstroke until I hit the 0.3 millimeters again. But now let's get into the simple DKS setup of walking when you slightly press down the W and actually sprinting when you actually bottom down the switch. First, we want to make sure that the W key will remain active over the whole range. If you're gonna remove a path, your character simply won't be walking anymore in that specific range. Under the W key, you can add a second action. Let's add the left shift button. Type shift in the search bar or simply press the left shift key on your keyboard to edit. Right now, left shift is inactive. But to make the left shift active when you bottom out the key, start put the second trigger circle and drag it until the third circle. This will now mean that the left shift will be activated once it reaches the 3.6 millimeter mark on the end of the press and it will deactivate once you release the key past the 3.6 millimeter mark on the upstroke. But of course, DKS, you can do a lot more with this. So let me give you a few more examples of what you can maybe think about to assign to DKS. So using DKS in Apex Legends makes it easier to consistently hit superglides. So first assign the jump button to be the first action on the upstroke and then assign the crouch button to be the second action on the upstroke. And then simply fine tune the release point to around 2.7 millimeters of travel. But of course you can customize this to however you would like. So now basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to an edge, you keep holding down the DKS button and once you climb up you simply just release it and voila you're doing the super glide
Second off, in Counter-Strike, you can actually use DKS to quickly buy items. Basically, you only have to assign four different buttons to DKS. Let's say if you want to quick buy an AK-47, first button should be then the B to open the menu. Then choose the number of category. So the AK is in the fourth category, so in my case, I put in the four. And then the slot where the item is at. In this case, it's gonna be the two. And then insert the tab to close the buying menu and voila! You now have pretty much a rapid buying setup for the AK-47. And of course you can have multiple setups for this. So you can also do like for Kevlar or the Deagle for instance. In League of Legends itself, you can bind the Ctrl Q, W or E to DKS itself to quickly level up your abilities. Especially when fights become intense, having to just press one little button can, you know, make all the difference. So in Fortnite you can edit your structures by simply holding down the edit button and then once you are done releasing the edit button again. Basically what you do is set up your edit button on the beginning of the downstroke and also the beginning of the upstroke so you can rapidly you know start editing but also release it from editing once you've completed your setup. Now let's go to Rust and let's say you're streaming and you need to look at the map but you don't want your viewers to see where you are to combat stream snipers. Opening the map will require you to basically hold down the G button. So what you can do is set up a hotkey in OBS that when you press G, you switch to an intermission screen. And then on an upstroke, when you release the switch, it will switch to the normal gameplay scene again. And of course, you can decide yourself what hotkey it will be on the upstroke to, you know, switch back to the normal gaming scene. And now we're getting in some productivity tasks to make life in Windows just a bit easier. So the first one is you can have a shortcut to open task manager with the Ctrl plus shift plus escape shortcut. Further you can also assign copy and paste functions to a single key or separate them across two different keys depending on of course on your preference. Basically you select the text you want to copy, then hold down the DKS key so it's copied. While holding you actually go to another document and then release the DKS key to actually paste it again. Further you can also create a shortcut to lock your windows. Simply bind the windows key on the first action slot and L on the second and then voila you can very easily in one tap just lock your windows. And you might have noticed you cannot remap all the special alt codes in Wutility itself, like the dollar sign. But you can actually use them with DKS. Just bind alt plus numpad 3 and 6 and pressing now the DKS key will output the dollar symbol. Since DKS only allows 4 actions, longer alt codes won't fully fit. In that case, bind the numpad numbers in DKS itself and manually hold down the alt key to make it all work. And that's pretty much it for DKS. Of course, if you guys have any use cases that uh, for DKS that I've never thought about, then leave them down in the comments below. I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to share with us. And maybe I can make an updated video about more use cases for DKS and I can, you know, try to fiddle around with those. But yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you guys for watching and we'll check you guys out in the next one. Goodbye.